What do Snoopy, a heart, and ET have to do with good implant design? You're about to find out. We're going to explore three main shapes of restorations, which ones you want and which ones are likely to end in disaster. If I show you a picture of this implant, what do you see? I see this, a Snoopy. You're going to be cursed now. You're not going to be able to look at a restoration like this without seeing these shapes. What's really amazing, however, is what you're actually seeing here is a cantilever. As soon as you see that snout on an implant, you know you have a cantilever. That means the resisting force of the implant is not directly under the mesial margin ridge. Any bite forces on the mesial margin ridge are going to create a bending moment. What's the problem with that? Over time, those off-axis forces are going to likely cause a significant number of of mechanical complications. Screw loosening, crown separation, abutment to crown cement delamination, broken restorations, and sometimes a broken implant. If you see one of these, what's your contingency? You make sure that the mesial margin ridge is out of contact. It's not ideal, as food will still push in on it, but you can reduce the risk by keeping heavy contacts off the mesial margin ridge with this solution. Keep your contacts right over the center of the implant. However, there's a better way to mitigate this risk. Don't make a Snoopy in the first place. Next up, we have a heart. Ah, it's a beautiful heart. We love the heart. If we see a heart, we know we have a win. Why? Because the force is in the center. The force is applied axially to the implant. This means that a heart is likely to last forever. Forever! You'll likely won't have any mechanical complications. Finally, we have ET. If you see an ET, you likely have problems. What we're talking about here is a crown with a narrow neck. Call it a lollipop on a stick, ET, whatever you want, but it's a restoration where we have a narrow neck and a wide crown. The neck can be very long or there can be little neck at all, but the base is much narrower than the crown. Heart, Snoopy, ET. Remember these shapes. Now, why does this happen? It all comes down to physics. I know, I know, we're dentists. We're biology people. We don't like physics. Don't worry, we're gonna make this simple. As I mentioned earlier, when you see a Snoopy, you're seeing a cantilever. Cantilevers aren't evil, but we generally want to avoid them when designing our crowns. Cantilevers, by definition, are systems in which axial forces are converted into rotational forces because they aren't loaded directly over the axis of the supporting structure. If that sounds confusing, let's simplify it further. Here's an implant. Implants are strong when loaded axially or vertically down the center, but weak when shear forces are applied. A Snoopy acts like a traffic light or an umbrella. When a force is applied out here, it acts as a lever and tries to bend the implant. That's our shear force, no good. We're likely going to have damage or breakage here. A heart, on the other hand, is ideal. That's because the heart is centered directly over the implant. Unlike a Snoopy, where forces are applied off axis, our heart transfers the force right down the middle of the implant. It's balanced. Take these two people carrying water, for example. If they have two buckets attached to their yoke, equally full of water, it's easy to carry. If we take a bucket away, however, uh. this person struggles with half the weight. Same thing here. As soon as the first plate fell off, this guy couldn't handle the load, even though he was holding less weight. The missing weight created a cantilever, a Snoopy. Equal loads lead to good outcomes. You want a heart. Now, that brings us to our ET. But Dr. Rob, you might say, an ET looks balanced over the implant too. You'd be right. This one comes down to emergence profile. If you're not familiar, emergence profile refers to the angle at which the crown emerges from the implant. Emergence profile is extremely important because it greatly affects the way forces are applied to an implant. This is called a static problem. If it looks complicated, don't worry. I'll explain it further in a minute. This type of problem is something you typically learn in your second year of engineering school. I asked, what if I assume the top part of these two crowns are exactly the same, but I set up this solution with a four millimeter emergence and this one with a one millimeter emergence? That means this implant is placed four millimeters below the desired free digital margin, and this one is placed one millimeter below it. Next, I applied the exact same forces to both cases. What do you think will happen to this area of each restoration when the same force is applied to both? There was a seven time increase in the force of this solution versus this one seven times. Why isn't this common knowledge? Because studies that look at implant failures were not controlling for implant depth. 
They haven't focused on the emergence profile. They've been adding to the middle sections of the crown, but that isn't how we do it in real life. We actually change the emergence profile. This problem magnifies because this point is also commonly the point where the custom abutment meets the crown in a cement line. That's the weak point, the bond point. We're putting our weakest point of a restoration right at the spot where there is a seven time increase in force applied. No wonder we can see failures. That's why ET is a problem. It's seven times more likely to fail than a heart. If you're not convinced, let me give this to you graphically. Here's the difference in the risk based on the emergence profile, heart versus ET. Here's the difference in tension between the two restorations. The tension on this one is small. The tension here is enormous. To help illustrate this, let's look at Olympic weightlifting. There are two similar lifts, the snatch and the clean. Which one do you think humans can lift more weight in? Exactly. This one applies the force much more axially. It's much easier to lift in this position than in this one. Let's look at a few examples. This one isn't even a Snoopy, it's a flag. The emergence profile is basically zero degrees. What happened? Surprise, it failed. Here it is on the table. This is what we want. Nice heart, implant placed in the right position, three millimeters below the free gingival margin. No food traps between the teeth and the implant, just a great implant placement and restoration. To keep things super simple, just remember, heart is good, implant placed three millimeters below the desired free gingival margin. If it looks like an ET, warning, danger. So make sure you're going for hearts, Avoiding ETs and snubbing Snoopies. Smile Engineer, out.